last few in that opening quarter, which sped on by. Furman leads it by eight as we start the second 10 minutes. Furman, 11 on the boards, seven of those defensive. We talked about the fact that it's one and done for ETSU. This time they hit the one. Tiana Tarter again getting to the basket so quick when she finds a seam. Seven straight now for ETSU, which has done a nice job here withstanding the barrage of threes from the Paladins. They hit their first five. Wilkins tries to drive in on Christopher, who goes for the steal, and it opens up the lane. Wilkins did a nice job of regathering that ball. She almost lost the handle and then squares herself nicely. I think one of the things that ETSU is doing differently is they're really forcing Whitney Bunn out of the action, trying to deny her all the way out so that she is not a factor either in ball distribution or scoring. ETSU has won at least two games in each of its last two trips in the Southern Conference Tournament as Tartar loses this one out of bounds. This is just their second year back in the league, though. They left for a long time, came back, so they won two games last year. Before that, their last trip to the tournament was 2005. For both the men and the women have made an immediate impact upon their return to the league. And ETSU, when they were in the Atlantic Sun, had a string of tournament appearances and had a, a very good series there for two, three, four years. Shamaria Bridges will reset. Junior out of Miramar, Florida. Second team all-conference member. Can't shake her, man. Whitney Bunn comes over to help out. Strip it away, and then Bridges commits the foul. And that's a hard foul by Bridges, but she was going to make sure that Whitney Bunn wasn't able to finish. Good job by Bunn, just sticking a hand in there after her teammate Kelsey Ellis hounding Bridges, and then Bridges with a hard foul, putting Bunn on the free throw line. Feels like she's played more than the 92 games she's already played. <laughs> Only a junior, but with the accolades she's racking up, that's what tends to happen with players with so much early success. It feels like they've been around forever. I keep expecting her to graduate. In the last meeting between these two teams, no, in the first meeting, I'm sorry, at, at Greenville, she had 25 points. 21 of them were in the second half. So certainly uh, the point person on the scouting report for Brittany Zell and her team, that they've got to know where she is and what she's doing. Here's Raven Dean. Strong from three. It's Carter who secures the rebound. Bunn couldn't get it down to Duncan. Instead, it's into the corner. Kelsey Ellis off the mark. ETSU not afraid to push the pace, especially that opening's there for them. And pushing the pace will be to their advantage. They can increase tempo. They have the athleticism to be able to maintain that. Furman is a much better in the half court, needs to get it in a slow down game. Raven Dean worked Caitlin Duncan a little bit there. Two members of the all freshman team. ETSU is within seven. Offensive. Tartar had the position. It's the first foul of the game on Bunn. And I think Bunn wanted to change directions and then didn't make that decision. Maybe thought that she could initiate the contact but draw the block. And good call by the officiating staff. That was clearly Bunn running over Tartar, who comes up a little bit gimpy. That was pretty solid contact right there, right into the left shoulder, right around that area. And you see how in control Brittany Ezell is. A couple steps onto the floor to call the play again. Couple of sophomores here, Schur and Carter. Down to the baseline to Dean. Dean showing good range. Freshman shooting about 37% from the floor. Struggling a little here early, but I expect that to change. She has a great athletic size for her. Can go inside and out. Wilkins. Has deep position on Christopher. Elects to give it up. 
Loose rebound. Duncan lost it out of bounds. It was last touched, however, by Dean. Paladins keep it with 6.42 to play, up by 7. I think Wilkins felt Raven Dean in the area as well, and that's the reason she gave it up. But she certainly has a mismatch whenever she could be isolated down low against Chandler Christopher. Now Wilkins will take a deep two instead. Another offensive rebound. That's Kelsey Ellis who doesn't have the follow. Ellis has been very active today. And she comes back with the block. A nice block by Ellis. Great timing. And as much as there's all of a sudden a lid on the basket on the offensive end, the hustle on the defensive end preventing one of the best three-point shooters in the league from getting that one. Beasley comes into the game, Joe. Give Ellis a little bit of a blow here. Much deserved. Much deserved. Sure, on the alley-oop tip, rolls off down to Wilkins. The last few trips by Furman, they've been settling for long-range shots, and they have not really worked their offenses as well as they did early. They need to get back to getting to the third or fourth option. Those were the shots that they were getting. Whitney Bunn will get them into their offensive set. Six seconds on the shot clock as Schur switches out on her. They've now missed their last four threes and their last six total shots. Bridges with a head fake. Found a little bit of room, and she was fouled. It's a nice shot fake by Bridges. Gets one dribble, enough space to clear it. Knocks down the shot. Just inside the arc, so three-point opportunity the old-fashioned way. And Jackie Carson working the officials on the sideline. Feels like maybe some of her long-range shooters have also been fouled, and she hasn't gotten some of those calls. A little chirping. The frustration's mounting. It happens when you miss six straight shots. Whitney Bunn silences that drought, and Furman's lead stretches back to six. Uh, they, Furman needs to get back to offensive execution, and they're going to have to do it with good screens set and finding some interior scoring as well in order to balance out the long-range shots. Dean and Duncan battling for it. Sure joins the party. The held ball is in favor of the Paladins. It's a great scramble play here as a lot of black jerseys get to the floor. There come the white jerseys in, tie it up. And that's what's so fun about this time of year, Darren, is that you're playing for everything in the, the game that you're in, and you've got to leave it all on the floor. Active hands for Christopher, then her teammate Bridges decks her. It ends up with Tartar all the way to the rim, and she gets too deep. I'm sure Chandler Christopher didn't expect to be decked by her own player. <laughs> yeah, from behind, never even sensed it. So the wild sequence ends with Hollywood.